in Jesus name we pray and the church of God said God bless you, you can sit down I promised you I was going to give the next message I'm going to do it now you can sit down when God makes a promise he fulfills it when we make a promise what should we do he fulfill it first Corinthians chapter 13 we're reading from verse 1 first Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 though I speak of the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity have not love I am become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burnt, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. As you look at the word of God, and you see the things the Spirit of God made Paul the apostle to say. Look at them. Number one, speaking in tongues. To the point of speaking in a fluent language of angels. Number two, having the gift of prophecy. That you can stand side by side with Isaiah the prophet. And then number three, you have the understanding of all mysteries of the kingdom. Number four, you have all knowledge. Number five, you have all faiths, different kinds of faiths. Number six, after you have moved the mountains, number six, you are able to bestow your goods to feed the poor. You're charitable, you're hospitable, and you give. They know you to be a giver. And then it says, all that, if I do not have love, agape love the love of god in the heart of man the love that is like that of christ if i don't have that it says number one i am like just a metal making sound two i am nothing and three it profits me nothing that's why with everything we've heard and with everything we have learned, we need to understand the place of faith, the place of hope, the place of charity, love. Verse 13, and now abided faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these, tell me, is charity pure faith, precious hope, and preeminent love. Three things quickly. Number one, the purifying faith of heavenly-minded Christians. You're a Christian? The only kind of Christian that is worth a sort is the one that is heavenly-minded. And you must have purifying faith, the purifying faith of heavenly minded Christians. Number two, the precious hope of heavenward children. You're a child of God. You've come out of your sin. You're no more a child of the devil. You say, I'm a child of God now. You must be heavenward and you have precious hope. Number three, the practical love of heavenly citizens. The practical love of heavenly citizens. Number one, 
the purifying face. The face will have the different kinds of face. There's a face that can move mountains. There's a face that can procure, receive healing. There's faith that can cast out devils. But the highest kind of faith which helps you toward heaven is purifying faith. Acts chapter 15 verse 9. Acts chapter 15 verse 9. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Whatever other faith you are looking for, make this number one. Because blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You purify the heart through faith. James chapter 4 verse 8. James chapter 4 verse 8 Draw near to God And he will draw near to you Cleanse your hands You find, you say you are a Christian Your fingers are sticky And you see things belonging to other people And you pick them up And they are yours And nobody has given it to you in the office, you can pick a pence there that is meant for the office and you fill your houses with papers and pen from the office. Your hands are sticky. Your hand is touching this and touching that. And your hand does not know that there is something that is called decorum, something proper. It says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts you double-minded if you're double-minded sometimes you believe this sometimes you believe that sometimes you're off sometimes you're down sometimes i'm going for sometimes i'm sliding back sometimes i say yes to the lord at other times i say why did i say yes i'm saying no you're double-minded that's not how to get to heaven purify your hearts you double-minded and he says it's when we do that we have that purifying faith i'm looking at first peter First Peter chapter 1, we're reading from verse 22, purifying faith of heavenly minded Christians. First Peter chapter 1, verse 22, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth. Obeying the truth. Faith brings obedience. And then it says, through the Spirit, unto unfeigned love, unpretending love, on hypocritical love, sincere love, transparent love of the brethren. See that she love one another with what kind of heart? A pure heart fervently. First John chapter 3, reading from verse 1. First John chapter 3 verse 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does should not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Look at this. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Purifying faith of heavenly-minded Christians. Point number two. Precious hope of heavenward children, precious hope of heavenward children. In Romans chapter 15, reading from verse 4, Romans chapter 15, we're reading from verse 4. Tells us about the scriptures, what the scriptures mean to us, and what it does for us. 
Romans chapter 15 verse 4 for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning whatsoever things were written aforetime what does that mean written before this time in Genesis were written for our learning written in Exodus when I see the blood I will pass over you. It was written for our learning. Reaching in Leviticus, it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. It's reaching for our learning. Reaching in numbers that if you don't do it, you will sin, and your sin will find you out. It's reaching for our learning. It's written in Deuteronomy. If a prophet arises and he speaks a word and that word does not come to pass, note that man is a false prophet. And all the prophecies that are being written at the end of the year and they just give us the lie and nothing is coming true. Those things were written in Deuteronomy. You are not counting to be a real prophet. All things that were written in Joshua. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But you will meditate therein day and night that you might observe to do according to all that is written therein. Only then will you have success. And then you have good success for whatsoever things were written aforetime. Were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of scriptures might have hope when you have a problem and it appears hopeless go to the scriptures and find somebody that has a similar problem and they trusted the lord and got solved their problems because through the writing of those scriptures written aforetime that is how we have hope. You'll have hope in Jesus' name. And even when things appear hopeless, you'll still have hope. Did I hear the amen? amen? Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. We against hope, believed in hope. It's quiet in the heart. Here is a problem. Here is a challenge, and it appears it's hopeless. Every solution we can prefer seems not to be working, and yet I know there is a God in heaven. Maybe I don't know the solution to the problem, but solution will come. We against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which is spoken, so shall that seed be. You see, if you are like that, you never backslide. Your tears will not overwhelm you. Your tears will not become an ocean that will drown you because against hope, you believe in hope. Sarah, how is Sarah going to have a child that's hopeless? I believe in hope all the same. The promise the Lord has given. If 20 years have passed and there's no fulfillment and yet I believe I'm not giving up that's what it means there I'm being not weak in faith he considered not is somebody now dead when he was about 100 years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief those who are hopeless are the people that stagger. They stagger like drunken people, like mad people. They panic. What will I do? And what, where am I going to go? How will this happen? They're going to throw all my loads outside. And they run here, they run there. It scatters their brain because they don't have hope in God. But Abraham, the father of the faithful, he was settled, he was stabilized, he staggered not at the promise of God through belief. I had hoped that problem would be solved, and I thought I was now at the end of the tunnel, 
and then the problem is still there looking at me at my face and I'm saying the problem is even growing and then I panic I go to this help me I go to this help me I go to this help me and I forget my God that God is the one that will solve the problem and then I come back I look at the Bible I see people in Bible days like myself and they went through this deep water and they came on the other side without any danger at all and now I know I will come out of this somebody there I said I will come out of this and so you are not so perplexed that you don't know what to do he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but he was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform there's going to be a performance in your life even if there's darkness, I don't worry about that. There's going to be a performance in your life. You are hearing a strange voices and dazzling sight. Do you see? Don't worry about that. There's going to be a performance in your life. The hope we have in God, that God cannot fail and God will not fail, that hope will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 1, First Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 3, First Peter chapter 1, we're reading here from verse 3, the hope we have in the Lord, a lively hope, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again unto what kind of hope? Unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved for you in heaven. Reserved in heaven for me for me for me you know you're invited to a place a dinner the president of the country has invited you other guests are there and then they have marched the seats out and on your seat they wrote your name and they put Reserved. Reserved. In heaven, reserved. In glory, reserved. In that party, in that feast, here on earth, other people got there before you. But there's something hold up, delaying you. Delaying you. And others have taken their seats. Some people, they're even standing. They've not got a seat. And they came near your seat. And they see a name there. And they put reserved. You know, as we're thinking of heaven and going to heaven. And you're a child of God. And your names are written in the book of life in heaven. Others, maybe they have gone. Others have reached there already. There are mansions for everyone. They have got their own mansions. And those who have gone before you will not take your seat. <laughs> On my seat. I'm talking about myself. There is a paper written there. I cannot. Praise the Lord. I can almost see it with my eyes. Since Deeper Life started, I remember one of our beloved sisters, I could tell you the name, 
And some of the old members there, sisters will remember the name. She suffered. We got them wanted to pray. And we were praying. Said, no, don't pray that prayer. Don't pray for me to be healed. He said, look at the angel. Look at my mansion. Look at this. Look at this. The pain was terrible. And we were praying with great faith. Lord, heal her. She said, no, I don't accept that prayer. The angel has come for me. What we preach has been so strong enough to send an angel from heaven and take this person that believed everything we preach. And that is how she went to heaven. Some have gone to heaven with what we're preaching. But even though those people have gone to heaven, on the basis of the message I preached, they are there now, but none of them can go and occupy my seat. It is reserved. Doesn't matter how holy they were, how righteous they were, how great they were, how favored they were, I have a reserved seat in heaven that nobody else will take. How about you? How about you? Something may hold you back. Hold up. Distraction. Persecution. Difficulties. And your steps are slower than what it used to be. But you still love the Lord. You are carrying a heavy load. A great load. But you are moving on. You are moving on. Understanding. When I get there. My reserved seat will be there. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, and on the field that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Amen. Will you get there? Amen. Verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Point number three, practical love of heavenly citizens. We're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, practical love of heavenly citizens. Charity suffereth long. Charity is not impatient. Love is not impatient. A little problem between husband and wife and the head for court. Charity suffers long. A little misunderstanding between parents and children, and the children become rude to their parents. Charity suffers long. A little delay in paying salary, employers to employees, and then the employers will carry placards. And they want to burn down the factory. They want to burn down the institution. Charity suffers long. We come to the retreat and there's a little correction, a little correction there. And then somebody is packing the load and will say, what's happening? I don't like the way they are talking. I'm going back home. Charity suffers long. They've been serving the food. And I'm here. And they pass by me and they go to give to that other person what's happening here i thought they said there's no partiality nepotism tribalism is that one is townsman why did they pass me here and they go to give the food to that other person okay now if that's the way they do things here i'm going back home charity suffers long and it's kind whatever you suffer 
whatever you go through will not take the kindness away from you and it's kind charity envies not charity wants not itself i know my position i know my height i know where i'm coming from these people don't understand they don't know who i am charity wants not itself it's not puffed up it does not behave itself unseemly rashly it does not behave itself in an impolite way a person who behaves in an impolite way is thoughtless it's not thinking of the good of other people whatever he wants whatever comes to his mind he just shout it out whatever he wants to do he just pushes everything aside and he goes the way if he feels like you know there is not enough uh, fresh air here he wants to remove the outer dress he removes the outer dress and people look at him what a lossy care that's exactly what happened to mad people mad people sometimes they are half naked on the street they don't care you look at them they don't care they only think about themselves they're living in a paradise by themselves because they don't think about others and it says charity will not behave itself unseemly seeketh not her own it's not seeking its own advantage our people our section our this our that it does not behave itself that way it does not seek our own it's not easily provoked thinkers no evil rejoices not in iniquity but rejoices in the truth he beareth all things he believeth all things of the word of god he hopeth all things he endureth all things charity never faileth in your heart the love of god will never fail In your interaction with people the love of god will never fail between you and your wife you and your husband the love of god will never fail between you and members of the church the love of god will never fail tell me if the love of god is there and that love of god does not fail there'll be no fighting there'll be no anger there'll be no fury and there'll be no misunderstanding i love him i love her i don't understand why he's doing that i don't understand why he's saying that but all the same charity never fails there's a kind of charity that fails human charity i'm fed up enough is enough i won't take that anymore this will not happen again if this happens again count me out i am gone that's human love it has limit it fails but tonight there's a kind of charity that comes from the throne of god and it comes into our heart and it will not fail it will go with you back home it will go with you to your place of work it will go with you everywhere and when you get back to your family it will go with your back to your family charity never fails your charity your love will never fail your faith will never fail your hope will not be disappointed your love will go with you all through life in jesus name and you will not fail heaven are you going to be there of course you'll be there in jesus name let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer pure faith precious hope preeminent love tell the lord tell the lord don't be tired we need this kind of faith we need this kind of hope and we need this kind of love the charity that never fails